Thrash Metal is a worldwide scene that invaded the early 80s with its aggressive take on politics. And today, it's still kicking ass. It all began with Kill 'em All by Metallica, but why are they always the ones that get mentioned? We've published several articles on this, so be sure to check the description for more metal. Stick around to see why these bands are legendary and why there's a stigma about the so-called Big Four. First up is Anthrax. Released in 1984, Fistful of Metal was a devastating album with close ties to hardcore punk. For the most part, the album is a classic thrash metal album. However, their album, Spreading the Disease, feels much more like a hardcore punk sound. And when it comes to speed, Anthrax is a speed demon from New York, blazing through time like there's no tomorrow. Their style blends humor, speed, and heavy riffs within a neatly packaged formula that they've managed to craft in the length of their 10 album history. However, in Sound of White Noise, the band would shift directions to an alternative metal sound since the alternative culture was popular back then when Lollapalooza and new metal started to invade America. Anthrax is best known for blending metal with rap on some of their tracks, like I'm the Man and Bring the Noise, a song featuring Public Enemy. According to Frank Bello, a new successor for All Kings is currently in the works but has no date announced. The torch that ignited the heaviest of bands like Slayer was Venom, and that torch eventually got placed into the correct hands in 1981. But thrash metal would not have been a worldwide menace without Venom. Released by 1982, the albums Welcome to Hell and Black Metal helped Slayer to become an unstoppable force, influencing extreme subgenres along the way. We have featured Venom on our blog too, so feel free to check those out. However, Slayer was so intimidating in the 80s that they influenced the Filthy 15. Yeah, as it turns out in 1985, there had to be this crusade against rock bands allegedly promoting sex, Satanism, and violence, but it wasn't until D. Snyder from Twisted Sister put the government in their place. The bands included in the Filthy 15 were Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, and Twisted Sister. Slayer was not on that list, but clearly they were a target. Anyway, the lawsuit only provoked more people to buy albums with the advisory sticker, but more on that later. Dave Lombardo's first double kick drum technique, Kerry King and Jeff Hanneman's chaotic riffs and solos, combined with Tom Araya's vocals made the thrash metal scene in San Francisco Bay Area so great. Listening to Slayer is like blazing through hell on an angry, red-eyed demon horse while the souls of the underworld are crying along with your ride. Twelve studio albums later and Slayer's thrash would come to a halt. After decades of playing all over the world, Rain in Blood is the golden standard regarded as one of the best thrash metal albums of all time. Check out Undisputed Attitude, which is Jeff Hanneman's way of paying tribute to punk, and God Hates Us All, which marked an important revival for the band. Despite the dramatic headlines, we're going to focus on their legacy and their music. The thrash metal scene from the San Francisco Bay Area would not be the same without the chops of Dave Mustaine and company when they were regarded as the most technically advanced band out of the Big Four. Their breed of thrash is fast with skeletal crushing rhythmic sections and advanced arrangements in their music, all while Mustaine and their many lineups they've had have written memorable tracks and complex guitar solos. They're just all over the place in Megadeth's music. However, if you are a bit new to Megadeth, getting used to the voice of Dave Mustaine and the many things he's said about Metallica might be a challenge. It seems like reporters really enjoy asking Mustaine these sort of questions and they seem to never get tired of it. Do you by chance remember the parental advisory crusade? Megadeth took aim at them in the cover of Anarchy in the UK and also in the song Hook in My Mouth. 
From their catalog, and despite the multitude of changes within the band, Peace Sells But Who's Buying was released during the biggest year of thrash metal in September of 1986, and went on to become a staple in metal music. Later, with the addition of Marty Friedman and Nick Menza, Megadeth would have its best lineup to date, no offense to Kiko. In 1991, Rust in Peace shocked the metal world, Tornado of Souls, Holy Wars, The Punishment Due, and Hangar 18 aren't all that far from being legendary tracks. Megadeth is still kicking ass today with Dystopia and The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. Not many bands in the music industry are able to say that their first four albums were legendary, one after the other. This is a rare case for any band starting out as a thrash quartet and then later switching up their style. Also, Metallica has been criticized for not actually playing fast, which is why they get a lot of hate because thrash metal really is all about being fast and aggressive. Hell, some people might even say that it was during Ride the Lightning that it all went downhill. But if this wasn't enough, their contributions would be even more frowned upon then. While this time, Outsiders praised the Black Album when it was released in 1991. But before we get there, let's not forget how amazing Master of Puppets was. Released in 1986 when thrash metal was having a blast. Damage Inc., Disposable Heroes, Battery, the list just goes on. Sadly, the main motivator and leader of the band, Cliff Burton, tragically died on a road accident before they could release the And Justice For All album. This one then saw the inclusion of Jason Newstead for the first time. The Black Album consists of 12 not thrash metal songs because apparently, when you sell that many albums, you can stop being true to yourself. However, this album has served as a gateway for newer fans of the genre to discover. If not discovering metal music, discovering Metallica's music, and with that, discovering other heavy and thrash metal bands. On July 25th of 2023, the 40th anniversary of Kill 'Em All was celebrated. Certainly difficult times for a group of metalheads just starting out. Their debut album paved the way for the future of metal and completely shook the music industry. Kill Em All is a very thrash metal album for many reasons. Perhaps one, because it is the first album that contained the true essence of an unknown thrash metal. However, there was another band that formed even before Metallica. The dispute over the real Big Four is quite tiring by now, and for some reason, it's kind of incorrect on a few levels. Historically, Exodus was the first thrash metal band to be formed. They are originally from Richmond, California, and the first lineup consisted of Kirk Hammett, Gary Holt, Paul Balaf, Tim Hunting, and Jeff Andrews. After two demos in 1982, Bonded by Blood finally saw the day of light in 1985. Perhaps the perception of the album would have been a bit different if it was released in the same year that it was recorded in 1984. The debate about their inclusion in the Big Four is not so much about Exodus and their contributions to thrash metal, but it's more about the fact that they were left out of the initial alignment. Their ever-changing energy portrayed on their debut album sounds just as much like thrash metal as Kill 'Em All does, with Piranha, Deliver Us to Evil, and more clearly separating the genre from all other British exports. Also worth mentioning that instrumentally, they were just on another level. The new wave of thrash metal bands like Havoc, Bonded by Blood, Evile, Municipal Waste, Hatchet, have all cited Exodus as being an important influence in their music. So the fact that they are not included kind of seems disrespectful. Tempo of the Damned is the sixth album for Exodus, and it's a formidable return to crushing form, produced by Andy Sneap. 
Check it out because it's a well-crafted mixture of thrashing energy with modern variants. What do you think? We didn't even discuss Overkill. Don't forget to subscribe with notifications on. Thanks for watching and stay metal.